I feel bad for the people who come to the live when it first goes up because there's nothing to look at. But hello, you good people. Happy Sunday. I heard today there's new uh, Planet Earth out as well, Series 3. David Attenborough, so get on that if you're not already on it. Has anybody got any good riddles or anything? Who's on? Who's got like a... Someone to get the chat going. I need like a riddle or... <laughs> I had a good one, you know. So in this... Uh, I was in a meeting uh, at work and we had this icebreaker that was what's a hill that you're willing to die on? And some people had some good ones. I said, I don't think uh, tomatoes belong on cheeseburgers. Then everyone started having a go at me. Oh, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're on about. So you lot let me know if you can be bothered. Uh, what's a hill that you would die on? Something that you think is like, you just absolutely believe it to the core of your being. Who's got something for me? Nobody should be visiting pumpkin patches, maybe. Terrible. Better than Luke. Cobra better than Luke. Wow. Do you really think? I've not had enough experience with Cobra, but I think Loop, the, I love it because the colours are pingy and I think it lasts right to the end. If you've got a can of Loop, you can have it on like 1% for ages and it still goes and goes and goes. Then if Cobra is the same. Yeah, I've got some, uh, got some Moroccan snacks. I've just been over to the shop there. And it's like all the shops are just like little roadside huts where they've got these certain uh, LED <coughs> lights. So if you see them, you know you're in business. And I thought, let me go. Let's try some different bits. And then when I'm over there, I was thinking, yeah, you know what? I've got some drawings done. I might as well go on live. It'll make me do it. Makes me not look at my phone for an hour. Uh, so soon I'm going to crack out the snacks. I'm going to see what's going on. I've got this like little couple of different bits nothing too exciting maybe if i do another live i might go there with getting some snacks in mind for the live just to have something fun to do 
fucking love snacking, man. What are we working with? I've got it in my head now. Connoisseurs among you will recognise the weight of the bag there, the sound, you know, that what we're dealing with is a fair few snacks. I've got this little lava, some like cheesecake thing. You can get into that. But I think for the moment it's a liquid refreshment, little Poms one. Who's seen that before? Let's see what that's about. Might be nice. Everyone's on, look at this, fucking popping. Big of all the people popping through. I wish you could play music on live. I did it one time, I recorded a whole live and it was, I'm drawing, drawing, drawing. I thought, yeah, it's be cool, I'll post it uh, to my page. And then I got like a strike after it was saying like, yeah, you can't do that, you can't just play tunes. I think you ain't the world stupid. Like everyone enjoys music, just play it, who cares? Someone give me some chat, what's happening? Tell me the worst thing that's happened over your weekend, someone in there. I always think if I'm on the live, I'll just say yes, bro. <laughs> Send a little locked emoji. There's no way I'm engaging in a conversation. It's a big up you like we're not, because I'd do the same thing. But if anyone's got... Who's had a mare this weekend? Someone told me they've had a nightmare. What's happened? Do you ever give the little dudes you draw names? Sometimes. Uh, odd times, clients will come to me and they'll say like, cool, we need a monster to represent this thing. So big up Mill Hill, I saw he was locked on earlier. His little fella is called Clive. I'm not sure on the origins or the reason why he's Clive, but he is Clive. Um, sometimes I'll do commissions for people and they start naming them, which is nice. But yeah, not too much. I did a... Um, I did one t-shirt, I was thinking like what I wanted to do because I was getting, when I was doing the stalls people were asking for like a, just a standard like monster t-shirt, a little breast print of one of the characters. And so I called the t-shirt the Roger t-shirt because I figured if it sells out, rather than do like the same one again, I'd want to do like the, I don't know, the Trevor t-shirt and do like a different monster, same kind of style of t-shirt, do maybe like white on black t-shirt and then with another one do like another colour. I've done a blue for the first run. Uh, so it's going to be like, yeah, the Roger t-shirt, the Trevor t-shirt, whatever, whatever. And I guess that would be like giving them some names, but yeah, not really. It's not, I don't know, not really something I think about. It's more like if I'm drawing a random character, not these monsters, but more just like if I'm drawing someone stupid, like a man in anguish, I'll be like, I'll try and flesh him out in my mind just to make myself laugh. I want to do tattoos, man. I've been thinking about it recently. I want to do like... I follow a couple of people on Instagram who do stick and poke tattoos. I think it'd be pretty fun. So if anyone wants to let me tattoo them, it'd probably be rubbish. But uh, yeah, I want to do it. Looks fun. People like pop up in a tattoo shop. Hey, I'm here for a day. I'm in Bristol. Da 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 da. Come get a tattoo. Looks like fun. We've got Corinne. I'm going to tell you. Having the chat. This is where I fuck it. I draw right up to the edge. And then now, like, I've got to go like that. But I can't. It don't make sense. And so now we've got to get creative. This is why I love this Procreate shit. I remember last time I was on live, I was like a soft ambassador saying, like, get on it. It's so amazing. It's like 12 quid, industry standard tool. You just need an app and a pencil. And you're off. It's so easy to use and so fun. And you've got so many, like, different brushes or things you can follow in line or whatever. And... All I'm hearing from all corners of the world is mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. So get the iPad out. Funny, because when I go live, I see people locking who I didn't know followed my art account. So, oh, hi.
see what this little apple drops saying. Like I said, Moroccan snacks. I think I'm starting it with this little. I don't know. I've seen it in the shop the other day. I like apple stuff. So let's see what it's saying. It might be nice. We've got Mimi, the Moroccan constitu constituency locked. Do you ever download brush sets? Yeah, I've had a couple. I always get sponsored ads for them. Mm. It's pretty good. Wow, fuck. Mm. Yeah, I do. Because um, they're cheap. And just like, once you've got them, you've got them. They're so worth it, I think. You see, like, guys who have sets online. I'll show you some of the ones I've got. I bought these Timmy Textures. That's the dude that I always see. And he's just got, like, a bunch of this different stuff. But then there's, like, stipple stuff and... Sticker stuff, all this stuff, just different brushes, whatever. But then I always just end up using the same couple. Uh, but I had a secret Santa with an ex colleague the other year, and she's like a big pro pro create artist. And uh, she, oh, I'm on the wrong one. And she gave me like a huge brush set. She's more into like a painterly sort of style. But she gave me this brush set and she gave me a bunch of canvases as well. So she's got like backgrounds, I guess, that you drop in. And maybe the brush reacts to it slightly different or something. But um, yeah, what a cool thing. And then my other mate, he, he had a set. I said, free it up then, like just send the file over. He was like, oh no, I don't know if you can do it. So I told him how to do it and then he just didn't do it. And I was saying to him, like, I've got a bunch. If you want all of mine, we can just share. And he was like, nah, you're all right. So that's them sort of people. I'm sure girls have that problem where you've got girl mates who... Do you, the, do you know the one where they say, like, oh, I love your top, where did you get it from? They're like, yeah, it's a secret. I think it's the same vibe. He says, I'm going to request some... I'm looking on the... Oh, hang on, it might be on the phone. Oh, yeah, they... Oh, come on. Kaya, I've got you. That's such a great shout. The thing I always leave out the little extendo, extendo hands, but yeah, I'll stick them in. Corinthian, I've got a bunch of stipple brushes for my tattoo stuff. It's so useful. They're so good because they're so consistent. You can just, like, blast through it. It's so cool. I need to, like, evolve it a little bit. So I started using this pencil brush that I really like. And then I'll set the opacity at kind of, like, just below 100. And you just get, like, a little bit more of a touch. You can see there how I've used it. And I like the texture. And then I'll typically, like, put all the outline on one layer, colour it with, like, the pencil again, and then clipping mask that on top and reduce the opacity till it looks... Uh, you know just nice unique whatever but yeah i need to i do the odd illustration where i'll pick up the stipple brushes and just like add it you know all the under shadow is just like stipple brush it looks really cool and i think yeah i should do that more often but i just forget i think maybe when i get around to designing some new prints because they're more like one-off pieces and sort of explorations i might go for that excuse me fucking burping this fizzy shit oh my god poms big up pom Catching up on last night's UFC, big up all the pirates. Very, very important to commit piracy at every turn. I'm going to allow doing that now because I'm so boring for a live. <laughs> I'll do it later. Just imagine that's all filled in. Yeah, wicked. Well done. Nice one. Uh, who's saying what? Big up Jamie joining. Uh, I had an idea earlier for something as well. It's gone out my head. I think I might have shouted a body to this fella. Maybe make him the centre of it. Big Ben. Hang tight, Ben. I feel like I ain't seen you in ages. Mm, oh, you know what? I might slap in a little old school one that I used to. I used to draw this guy, Septopus. Like way back, way back when. See, I've done it again. I always get too close to the edge. Max says, loving this concept. Wait, what do you mean, uh, Max? Do you mean the concept for the live, sitting and drawing and just chatting, chilling, whatever, eating snacks? Or do you mean literally what's on the, the uh, page right now? Keen to know. Reply at your first convenience. you ever met someone so odd they inspired you to draw a monster of them and then you never told them you know what probably not because like the monsters thing is relatively new i just wanted to draw like an androgynous uh i don't know whatever character just like a fun thing that i could like get where i could do a quick one or a long one or whatever but i had like a life drawing assignment i think it must have been when i was in my final year at unit and i used to 
obviously because of the blog or whatever, I'd always just take photos of random people around town, which is mental now. There's so much discourse about don't take photos of strangers. I was on the front line, what a bad person. But anyway, and uh, <clears throat> I saw this old boy, he was like some fat old lad. He had like one of them, do you know, remember them flame shirts we all had when we were 14 years old? He had like a hat that was one of them. And he was sat there like with his bike parked off, just chilling. And uh, I took this picture of him and drew from the picture. And it was like a really nice drawing. I, you know, kept it in the portfolio for years. And then I knew where it was. I could reach it on my blog. And uh, years later, I seen the guy in town. And I was like, no way. I was like, I had to show him. So I've like pulled it up. I was like, explained to him when I was a student, I did this drawing of you. And he was loving it to be fair. He was like, yeah, you smashed it. It looks just like me. He was dead nice about it. So <clears throat> that was cool. But yeah, other than that, I'm not sure. Maybe not the monsters. Sometimes I think it's the other way around. Often like I find... Because I'm, I can do portraiture, but I have to like warm into it. But I find like sometimes I'll be drawing something or someone, and then it reminds you of something or someone, and then you follow off down that path. So it's like usually the other way. You just like lean into it if it starts to come. Corinne, what did you study at uni? I did a uh, graphic design and illustration at DMU. I fucking hated it so much. All those people who say that uni is the best time of your life, they never had mates. They're probably virgins when they went off to uni or whatever. Or, or they're them sort of people who go to uni and just make a new version of themselves. I fucking hated uni. I was so glad to get done with it. Big up, Max. Yep, yep, the drawing vibes. Live dudes. Well, I've got a lot of work to do, Max. So I'm thinking I wanted to test how this went tonight on the Moroccan Wi-Fi. And uh, given that it's all Gucci and I guess it's, you know, the stream's all right. I reckon this is going to be the setup. So hopefully do more live soon. Bring back talking heads. <laughs> yeah, for the streets. For the streets. Big up, Frank. Barn saying, a retired disco knee slider. I don't know what that means. Oh, right, hang on. A retired disco knee slider. What, is that me? Is it a grown-up? Retired disco knee slider. A retired disco knee slider. Big up everyone sliding on their knees in the disco. I have to say, I hung it up a while ago. It'd be a good, good one to pull out at a wedding, though, wouldn't it? You know how all the lads tie their ties around? Oh, mental, I've got my tie on my head. Do you reckon if you started cutting about on your knees, everyone would be like, wow, fucking hell, forever young. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. <laughs> Big up Nick. Josh locking in. Ah, Barnes, the old boy in the flame shirt. Yeah, exactly, mate. He still had it. He still had it. Do you know what it does me? You know at weddings and that, when um, there's just an old person literally present, they could just be sat in a corner doing fuck all shit in their pants, and uh, people go, oh, they're brilliant. And they've been brilliant today. I think he's just been brilliant. I just think, fucking hell, you know, if I'm old and people are talking about me like that, just let me die. He's, he's so brilliant. He's, he's alive. Is this a mental breakdown? Josh set up the city, come on. Big up Josh. Big up Sangha. What else is happening, peeps? Come on, someone's had a horror story this weekend. Drop it in the comments. Let's have a have a look. Who's <laughs> saying what? Some someone's had an absolute stinker this weekend, and they're keeping it quiet. You can see you cutting about doing some knee slides at the next beast. Went fucking Christ! I think they. Go down a storm, wouldn't it? Everyone go, oh my lord. Look at this cool guy. I love Procreate so much. I've never started using the tool and enjoyed it more. <laughs> Next B swing entrance, knee slide. Tell him slap talking the hardest on the decks and just go for it. Yeah, everyone will be going mad. What? This guy's on a muzzle. Yeah, I've been having some hairy ones out here. I've been um Big up anyone who's ever been to Marrakesh, I guess you'd know what it's about, but fucking hell man, they know how to take they know how to get you to take your money out of your pocket. I was like night one, I've just like ventured into the Medina as ever thinking about my privilege as a man born on earth where I can just walk about at night if I want to. And uh this fella's like the young lad, he's like seventeen, he's like, Oh no, it's closed down there, he's like, Come this way, he's like, I'll show you the way to the square. I think that's nice. Start walking with him for a minute, yeah, chat, 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 he's into Real Madrid, blah blah blah. And at the end, he starts asking for some dough. So I'm like, look, mate, I ain't got any money on me. I didn't even think it would be a hustle. But I thought, you know, I respect the grind. He was nice enough. I said, I'm here for a little while. So I said, next time I see you, I'll drop a little peas on you. He goes, okay, cool. Say nothing. Leaves me to it. As it goes, the next night, I step out and I see the same lad. He's about a mile down the road. So I tap him on the shoulder. He's like, hi, Sammy. 
whatever, comes around the corner, I said, oh, do you remember what I said to you last night? He's like, yeah, 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 he's you got something for me. I said, yeah. So I dropped him a, a 50 note, which is like about just shy of a fiver. And he goes, what is this? What is this? This is nothing. What can I do with this? This is nothing. And I was like, I'm giving you free money. I'm thinking, what the fuck? You did nothing. I said to him, if you, if you earn like £4.70 every two minutes, you'd be the richest man in Marrakesh. What is this? This is nothing. Are you a gentleman? I'm saying, bro, I'm a gentleman, but I ain't rich. I'm like, take it or leave it in it. So he walks off, blagging me. And then comes back. He's like, go on then, I'll take it. I'll take it. So I said to him, look, take it. I said, next time you see me, you have to ignore me. I don't want to hear from you again. Are you saying what? Barnes says, my mate paid £80 for a Moroccan oil, got back to his hotel and Googled it at 55 quid, fuck. Oil, what kind of oil? Like olive oil, weed oil, hair oil? It's a myth. I keep getting raised up. You have to learn, you have to go through all the tourist traps to like learn them. Then I had another lad who pulled the same trick. I said, look, mate, I've had a lad the other night who's tried the same hustle. I said, I'm not interested. I'm not going to give you any money. No, 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 we're friends. You're my friend. I'll just show you. I'll just show you. Get around the corner, he starts telling me he's a kickboxer, he beat the under-15 Thailand champion, this, that, about 25. Then he's uh, he's showing me, like, his hand's cracking, he's holding his broken hand up to my ear and cracking it. He's like, yeah, I feel nothing, I feel nothing. Then he starts, like, thumping the wall, punching this wall so hard. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get my head punched in by some Moroccan kickboxer just for not giving him a fiver, so just give him a fiver. I was like, for fuck's sake, I was so pissed off. Then I went and got a haircut for two quid and had dinner for a quid. And I'm like, yeah, it's really not that deep. But uh, but yeah, now in the Medina, it's just sunglasses on, headphones on. Just fucking ignore everyone, because fuck that shit. Every time you step out, you get raised by someone. He says he thought he was buying that raw homemade special oil hair. Yeah, that's a long day. That's the thing as well. They've got like tourist prices for you. They fuck you over. I went to buy some chewing gum, and I thought, surely I'm not going to get hustled over chewing gum. Paid for it, and then like this is like day one or two when I'm still figuring out the conversion, and... Uh, I must have paid about three quid for this chewing gum. I'm thinking, yeah, he's seen me come in there. I think they all think you're James Bond because you're from England. The nah prepared you for this lot of trying, man. I've, now I'm, I'm up to it. I had some, last, some lad the other day come uh, he was trying to sell me cigarettes, in it, And I was like, no, nah, I don't smoke, bro. And then he's just not having it off me. He's like, yeah, come on, you just buy something, buy something. I'm thinking, nah, this is it's a bit rare, but... To be fair, the lads are sound like everyone else is cool. I think the lads who live next door to me are like the top boys in the in the hood. So as long as they're blessed and I'm on their side, I don't think it'll be trouble. Big up everyone. Josh said, listening to this like a podcast, relax, love that. I can't remember if uh, last time I went live, I remember when I was in Turkey, I had some drawing to do. I went live and uh, I can't remember if I was talking or just like radio silence, but it's way more fun talking. Are you watching a tech here? We're just merging layers and stuff. Look at him. Look cool, dude. He's having a great day out. So now I might go a bit aquatic with this one. This is such a top drop. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Poms. Arabic writing on the back. It's mad here because they're speaking English, Arabic and French. So it's just like, depends who you get. You might get one guy who's like, I think they pretty much all speak Arabic. Most speak French and maybe like 30% speak English. But some people speak like French better than they do Arabic or, and they mix words up. They'll be speaking in French and you're kind of following the conversation along a bit. Then they'll just go, and you're like, oh, I'm lost now. And the lads keep trying to teach me words and it's like, it's so difficult to grasp the dialect. Max says chill vibes, big up. Oh, Matt, sorry, I thought it was Max. Matt X, blee. Always some lucky, lucky Don trying to raise, man. Do we have that? Do we have that in Lesla? Yeah, I'm all right. Got any... Oh, mate, don't. I had one, I lost my head. I was outside Softbait one time, just like when I used to live down that end of town. <laughs> and um, some crackhead, I've got my hands full, two bags of shopping, probably done and gone, gone and done the big Wilco's do. Two bags of shopping, it's pissing it down with rain. I've got my headphones in. Comes over to me with that same anguish face that they always do. Put the bags down, take my headphones out. He's like, oh, mate, you got... Oh, oh, I just lost my head. I'm thinking, you fucking joking. Of all the people to case, I've got my hands full and headphones in and it's pissing it down. It's like, just go without a rock for at least till it stopped raining. Oh, big cam. 
and tight cam. About 10 people locked on, but big up everyone in the future. But I'll say go Blast Cam's debut album, LOA. Very, very good music. I've got a lot of mates who rap. I saw a tweet today that summed up someone trying to big up Geordie, who is their mate, saying, look, I just want to shout about his music. I said, people think it's because he's my mate, but do you know how many people I know who rap? And I never felt more in tune with something. I was like, yes, that's exactly it. When I'm telling people, check out Cam's new album, there's bangers on it. They're thinking, oh, yeah, that's because that's your guy. But do you know how many mates I've got that rap where I don't tell people to go listen to their music? So go take it in. My favourites are Family Matters and A Little Bit Older. I'm a little bit older now. Copyright strike coming. Headphones all the way, zoned out. That's so true, Max. You've got to do what you've got to do. Look at that. This is the problem, though. You zoom right in and add a little detail like that. Now I've got to go with this same sort of line weight for this whole section. Weren't really in the plan, but I might have to do that. Uh, what to do? What to do? How to do this? Uh, excuse me. Poms is working. I feel like Procreate has maybe worse at drawing, though. It's maybe less committed with my line work. You're just like... They're fishes, not butt plugs, by the way. You, you, it's like you draw the perfect line. I used to be able to draw and just go, yeah, bang, that's the line, on to the next one. Whereas now, because you can take a step backwards, you do. And then I spoke to my other mate, Keith, or big up Keith for everyone who knows him. Uh, and he was like, yeah, you get to the point where you're drawing just with a pen and paper and you're like, you realise you can't take a step backwards. And I was like, yeah, fuck, I'm not looking forward to that. I can't be arsed with that. But it's all iPad for now. Which is long, because you ain't got the originals to sell. What program you're using? This is Procreate, bro. It's like I chat about every chance I get. It's like 12 quid on the app store. One word, Procreate. And as long as you've got a pen uh, and a tablet, you can use it. And it's like, it's just unbelievable. It's so easy to use and so intuitive. It's like they built it with like Apple AI in mind. And it's like you can see just how nice the canvas is to manipulate and sort of how easy it is to do what you want to do with it. So, yeah, I love it. I ain't ever going to stop using it. Josh says, I rate Cam. Blew me away seeing that on the Pepsi ad doing bits. Yeah, trust. Big up Cam, man. Meldo locking out at you. See the little dirty tricks? <laughs> and you lot thought I was drawing all the fish, you idiots. Mental. I wonder if you could get properly can. Yeah, obviously you can. I was going to say, I wonder if you can get properly cancelled for saying something on live. But like people do all the time, and they've just got followers rather than like nine people locking. Sometimes there will be stupid questions asked. I'm going to get into this first snack. Where is it? That little uh, lava. Cheesecake, like strawberry cheesecake flavour, maybe. Cake while one. Like an unboxing in it. Where's the kids at? No, they oh no, it's like a cereal bar. Oh, this could be really good. Look at that. Mmm. Oh. It's like a white chocolate covered rice crispy square square that's like strawberry cheesecake flavour. I forgot how to draw like seaweeds and that. How do you draw seaweeds? Mm. Uh, draw like a bit of a seabed. Just it's got to stay within this frame. Uh, I feel like some people are so good at learning to draw new things, whereas I just draw the same shit over and over. So it's like, even it gets annoying when it's like there's something in your brain and you can't recall it. Because you're like, yeah, come on, this should be bread and butter. 
Seen the monsters in Leicester today. It was good. Yeah, contentious uh, subject. Don't really want to talk about that one. But yeah, hopefully everyone's enjoying the trail. seaweed it's cool on procreate as well at the end it knocks out a little time lapse that you can put up and you get this uh there's some cool like analytics it should be more but it tells you like how long you've spent on the canvas and uh how many different individual pen strokes there's been and it's mind-blowing i'll do some super complex stuff and then it's like yeah four hours and then other things out it'll be something simple but i will have been pissing around with it it'd be like 10 hours and twice the strokes so it's always interesting. Is that exactly the same? No, okay, not too bad. Ah, maybe like that, yeah, okay, we're back. flopped him watching the fights from last night and uh kind of missing the action just listening to the commentary that's the way it goes isn't it alexander said i saw the bog swamp rocket during that loro's trail back in 2021 big up you and big up all the people who were that was the first time they'd heard my name or saw my work because that was an awesome project to be a part of all for a good cause and like which is obviously super important and super nice if you get to work and do something that's you know for the for a good cause or whatever but uh yeah something that was really cool on a personal level was those little toys they were produced by loro so they came and said you know obviously they thought that the kids would like my rocket and they were like we've got a budget with for some promo item we're thinking like a plushy toy and they were a one like they really involved me throughout the whole creative process and like you know there was some considerations about different parts of the design and whatever and they really let me lead on it which was awesome um the only problem was do you remember when all that shit was stuck on the Suez canal my little fucking bog swamp toys were on there. So they were supposed to land for the start of the trail, but they didn't arrive until about week three or four or something. Um, so we never really got to sell all of them. Uh, I think we could have sold more if we had a longer lead time. And then loads of them uh, from the Laura's back room just ended up in uh, their, uh, what's it called, charity shops. So if you're at a Laura, it's probably not one of the ones in this city centre because they might have been snapped up. But if you're at a Loro's in the future, just have a look for them because you'll find them like two quid in a little bargain basket. Corinne says, do you design the big wall art pieces in Procreate first? Do you mean, sorry, Corinne, as in like the graffiti stuff, like where it's, uh, say like my piece for Bring the Paint or whatever. Do you mean like the mural stuff or like the work that I did for uh, McLovin? Like, because the McLovin one was just a digital illustration that we blew up. With uh, let me show you actually. I've got the here somewhere. I'll have the uh, the stuff from Bring the Paint. It was just some some sketches, really. Where are they? Yeah, here we go. This was the I made a couple of these little sheets. Uh, and which ones were Bring the Paint? I think this guy was. Uh, maybe this guy. This guy was. Mm, that one was. And then uh, this one was, he was, mm, maybe that one, I can't remember, but some of these you'll recognise them from the LCB garden, right? So this is it, it was just an idea, because I always just revert to like this same kind of one, you know, that's like the standard one that I draw all the time. But um, I wanted to do, like, just some that were a little different. And I knew it was going to be, like, a murderer's row, just, like, passport photo kind of style. So I thought, yeah, it'd be cool to just quickly blast out some different styles, you know, like this dude with his little face and stuff. I forget, like, the balaclavas and that. They're just not the first thing that comes to mind when I'm drawing them kind of characters. But I do need to do more of it. 
you can see I'm not the most organised person, it's just all out in the open there. Barnes says pissed I ain't got a bog so I'm done man. If I uh if I see any anywhere I'll grab you on Barnes and then drop it on you. I got one of those toys myself and the fact that a lot of them were on the canal is just horrible. Yeah, it was long, man. It's all good. I like people who drop random emojis into their talk, though. So this is my kind of chat when you see I got one. Then you put the finger up emoji. One of those toys. Slap a little toy in there. My kind of stuff. Yeah, Karin, graffiti stuff, not so much. Like Sometimes I'll freestyle it, but you saw there them little sketches. Sometimes I'll... I'll go through something like that. That's only because it was like for Bring the Painter. It was like a nice big thing. I'm just doing my normal graffiti stuff. I'll probably do a tiny little sketch, but nothing, you know, literally a sketchy sketch like that where it's just a little bit. Barnes saying back to that back to the back to the tattooing topic as well shout me if you ever do it i'll let you freestyle yes bro i promise not to shag you i'll do you something sick just something simple and small emblematic but i'm thinking like i want to have a little go at it man i want to uh i think you can buy the kits for pretty cheap i don't think it's expensive to like i've got a couple of mates who do tattoos they could give me some pointers just need some willing guinea pigs to let me go wrong on them I wish you could go live for longer. I think you get like an hour, then it just ends. Can't remember when I started, but yeah, it'd be like it'd be cool if you could go live for longer. Um. Did you come to fame after the creation of Bob Swank and during the Loras Rockets trail or way famous? I'm not famous, bro. Beforehand, before, because I hadn't heard of you before the trail. I got more followers. That was a cool thing. Like every day people were tagging me in stuff. And obviously, you know, it's like if you're posting up, you're going you're gonna to see interaction and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, every day I was getting a couple new followers and some nice opportunities come out of it. Met a couple of cool clients that I deliver work for now. Um, and it was really nice because it was like I didn't have to compromise my style, you know. I was just allowed to like produce what I wanted to produce, and they were dead on board with it. So yeah, not fame. Come on, follow some of these dudes who have like sixty billion million followers, and they just cream work, go live around the world, and work in studios and stuff. It must be so good. Um, but inshallah, one day. What's Barnes saying? You get them big wireless tattoo pens nowadays anyway. Don't need those big guns. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Then I see some people who do this stick and poke shit, you know, like what Rihanna's got on her hands. And it looks super easy. And I'm thinking just for like a little like emblematic like monster's face or something, I reckon I could do it. None of this bzzz, Don't need to do all of that just yet. Yeah, it'd be a cool thing to venture into. But then I don't know. These tattoo guys is a bit of a clicky world sometimes, isn't it? Maybe they don't want me in their world. Oh, yeah, you're not a tattoo guy. No, 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 it's not that. Piss off. We've got Mickey locking. Someone give me a hill to die on, then. Who's got a hill to die on? Something that they truly believe that's like they're not shifting from. firing in the uh, the chat look at the emojis people are you seeing this effort will bog swamp be made into films or television shows or are you just going to keep him as a local art piece god knows i need a commissioner first someone to put the wheels in motion i had um yeah i've never done it actually there was a uh, someone who was like learning some animation stuff and whatever and they said uh 
can you send me over like they had this character sheet that was like a I don't know how to describe it do you know like if you got a um do you know those things where you get like a model boat and you have to build it and you get the plastic thing where you like pop all the other little bits of plastic out it was kind of like a page like that you know where you draw like the head the neck the body the left arm the right arm so on so on and it was so they could take it and like break it up and animate it or whatever um but it never came to fruition i think i never handed them the sheet never filled it out so i might reach back out to them and just say like look is that something that you still want to do or might be cool but yeah i don't know animation is very long and takes a lot of time and energy so you need a lot of people or you need to be super into it and i'm just not i thought when i was a kid like you're watching disney films you're thinking yeah i want to be an animator and then you have to find out that you have to do 60 million different frames it's like yeah i'm, I'm good on that i'll just stick to watching them i'm loving this you know having a little natter Everything changes. A little under the sea vibe. Needs to do like a portal now into another world or something. That'd be cool. Could see Bog Swamp on Netflix. Come on, Barnes, get the big bag. Then me and you go nap off. Bang. Hill to die on. 15 game, never hated each other. Is it hearsay? That's probably a bit more your area, Mickey. Was it just their uh, marketing? Kind of, oh my God, it could literally be like pro wrestling, um, Vince McMahon school of thought sort of stuff, couldn't it? Like just, yeah, cool, we hate each other. Let's make it exciting, have everyone talk about it. As long as your name's in their mouths, then it's a good thing. I think it maybe would have come to a head if they properly did, right? Disney animation wasn't e as wasn't as easy back in the day as the bug swamp animation that you do that you do now. You draw it on a tablet, but the Disney animation was a lot less easy. Yeah, of course. You needed a whole team. I was watching some shit today about how they used to split the background into like four layers to like zoom in through the different layers and give it like a sense of perspective. And it's just like how do you even come up with that, let alone put it into action? It's mental. That's like way too much work. It's fun being a consumer, but can you imagine working on that? And inevitably, you'd have the same shit you have in any job where someone makes you go forward only to go backwards and fuck, blah, 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 it gets long. Do, 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 do. I wonder if I could get a copyright strike for a fighter's walkout music in the background. Dum, do, 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 do. Can you come from a land down under? Exactly that post jar. 50 was calling. What better than internal politics? Yeah, and 50 cent ain't stupid. So, is he the goat? He's my goat. I think when people talk about rap and they say, who's the goat? I'm talking about, this is a man who, in any possible lane in rap music, he's conquered it. So, He's had huge albums, huge mixtapes, huge singles. He's got club tunes. He's got girl love tunes. He's got money motivation tunes. He's got gym tunes. He's got West Side tunes. He's got New York shit. He's got, he's, he can freestyle. He's a stage show performer. He's got, obviously he's good in the booth. He's got iconic videos. He's, I, come on. I think, I don't think there's another rapper who does all that shit that 50 does. You trying to say wrestling is fake? What the fuck, bro? I'm not saying anything. That's a good watch. Mickey, I bet you've watched it as well. You know the wrestling shit on a... I think it's literally called Wrestlers, that show on Netflix about Al Snow's promotion. Definitely a good watch. 
I've never had as much fun listening to hip hop than when 50 was taking everyone on. He's the best, bro. Yeah, he's yeah, like, even another thing I missed out, like war, clashing, like battling, right? He was taking people's heads off, like, he had dubs for people. I've like all these little shots what Kendrick puts in a DVD, 60 million mile per hour verse. Fucking bullshit. Talking of fighter entrance music, you ever see Mike Perry walking out to Beyonce Halo when he asked for the Halo frame tune? Now that's killer. <laughs> oh my god, imagine that. Surely, oh god, yeah, probably not. I'm going to say, surely it'd be checked before, but if all the people checking it think that that's what he's after, then yeah, cool, we've got the Beyonce tune, let's go. What a dead, 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 dead walkout tune as well. That's actually a shout. What would be your walkout tune? I need some, like, killer dipset shit or something. Why don't you see yourself as a celebrity? Because <laughs> I'm not. Because I can walk down the street. What do you mean? Why don't you see yourself as a celebrity? I'm not. That's funny. Because I'm, I'm maybe... Uh, what's it, To be a celebrity, do you need to get, like, invited places and that? Be in Heat magazine and stuff. This fight's worth a watch, by the way. No spoilers. What am I going to do? Lock off the live? Big Bad Bear Knuckles champion had to sing Beyonce in a moment. It happens, man. It happens, man. What's the best Beyonce song? I think it's uh, Sweet Dreams. Every night I rest in my bed. I think that, I think, me, myself and I and Deja Vu. You know Deja Vu when it kicks into that bit just before the uh, last chorus, like the bridge. And she's like hysterical. <laughs> Girl, I try to fetch myself, but I'm out of control. Oh, my Lord. I need to slap that tune on. My sexiness is so appealing. I can't let it go. That's like, that could be a Michael Jackson song, isn't it? Baby, I swear it's deja vu. And I think as well, Jigger, big him up. There's no one who's better at putting a rap verse on a pop tune than him because... How oh, flow so unusual, wow, all that. And like even the one from Crazy in Love. <laughs> H-O, light up the draw. You're going to need help trying to study my bounce flow. <laughs> Don't play yourself. Don't play yourself. Well, you don't necessarily need to be famous in the same way as Will Smith to be famous, but you could be classed as locally famous. I, I hear what you're saying, 100%. I hear what you're saying. It's nice being part of Leicester's creative texture and when i do the pop-ups that's one of my favorite things like obviously i love selling the t-shirts making peas da -da -da, whatever meeting other creators but a real cool thing is like meeting the people who come to the stall and they're saying like yeah i really love your, your art and whatever people are always dead sweet whenever someone wants to buy an original like the original folder i have this thing where i'm like they don't want to hurt my feelings by offering me too little money for it you know because art's like one of those things how much is it worth to you or whatever 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 but then I always have this conversation where I'm like, if you like what I draw enough to want to pay relatively big peas for a little original, I'm like, you're definitely not going to ups upset me. Like, I'm buzzing off that and I'd rather know it's going to a good home, you know? So it's sweet. I meet people and they're like, oh, yeah, I saw you done this. I saw you done that or whatever. So it's really nice and big up all the people that support. There's a fair few people who come cop things. They put their hands in their pocket or whatever or like even just sharing projects online or whatever. Like, I appreciate it so much. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things. It's a cool thing. Can't complain. Boy, you trying to catch myself, but I'm out of control. Your sexiness is so appealing, I can't let it go. Obviously, nobody will know your face. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, but they'll still likely know Bog Swamp even if they don't know the face. Yeah, facts, I get that. It's cool with the Bog Swamp stuff. I went uh, When the rocket was there, I went and had lunch at um, Bodega right next to it. It was like the most heartwarming shit ever. I'm just watching these kids run up and like take photos with it and just like pose next to it or whatever. So that was really sweet. Big up Shay, my brother. I love this guy. One of the most purest souls I've ever met. Big up Shay and his lovely family. Boy, I try to catch myself, but I'm out of control. Your sexiness is so appealing, I can't let it go. 
Diddly do, 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 do. Yeah, that's a great song. The main event of the evening. Kane popping up there as well, still locked in from the start. It's like Royal Rumble kind of, isn't it, the live? It's so like Royal Rumble, oh my God. New person comes in every minute or so and it's like, oh my God, who's coming down the ramp? It's Mr. Shea Artist. And then you've got some people who are sticking around for the long, they're not going anywhere, they're doing the big show one. Royal Rumble won the best, for me, that's like, I like that shit, man. That was always like my favourite thing in the calendar. Checked it. Oh, I've done wrong here then. That's too close to that. These are the bits you don't see in it when I just put a little drawing up. Look at that now, he's got little stupid fingers. Oh, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> Shay, I think I found my favourite place to be on Instagram. Come on, I was just saying earlier, I think when I last did a live, I don't think I was, um, I don't think I was chatting about anything. I think I was just sat there in silence so people are just coming and going, but it's way, way, way more fun to have a big old chat in it. Um, Alex, when did you create the Bog Swamp character? Uh, well, I'll tell you something. I had this... Uh, so let me see if I can find it here. Uh, Google Drive, Google Drive, Google Drive. Google Drive. Come on. Whatever, this is long. So ba I had this print, basically, the Monster Party print that I'd on sale for ages. And Bog Swamp was just in the bottom right of that uh, print. And then I've seen the submission for these rocket things. And they were like, oh, yeah, we need artists, whatever, whatever. So I thought, yeah, cool. It'd be cool to paint one like a monster character. So I looked at the print and thought, um, yeah, it'd, it'd be a good candidate. And then he just happened to be the dude who was in the bottom right of this print. And then... Uh, you had, you had to have, like, a narrative or something. They were like, oh, tell us about your rocket. And obviously everyone's doing, like, Leicester's textile industry and, like, calling out all these other things. I'm just there, like, yeah, it's a little drawing, whatever. So that's when I gave him this name and just, like, made up a bit of a narrative or whatever. And then, yeah, the rest was history. They accepted it and I painted it and whatever. Um, what fight is it? It's the main, main event bonds. Big Volk. Makaya versus Volk. Yeah, okay. Kane's got me. Big up all the people chatting between each other. Barnes used to work at me old barber shop. Kane goes out with me, mate Jess. Now you know each other. Boy, I try to catch myself, but I'm out of control. Remember Sweet Dreams as well? That's a good one. Every night I rest in my bed. Hopes that maybe I did your test. That's some 80s shit. Sweet dreams are a beautiful nightmare. And it goes. Massa ain't on it, I ain't going nowhere. Long as I ain't got you here, you never understand. I have to have a Beyonce day tomorrow. When you're hitting Jake Humphrey's high performance podcast, you have to ask uh, Alex there. I have to jump on soon. Seen a clip of him fucking with Gordon Ramsay on it recently, and he up his ass over some car. He's such a weird melt in a high performance. Make sure you got your five o'clock alarms set for tomorrow, boys. High performance, Jake Humphrey's. It's what'll happen if you knock around with Rio Ferdinand too much. Why can't I draw this gun finger then? Because that's like... Do you remember what I said a minute ago about how you, you, there's artists that can just fucking draw anything, pull it out of their arse and they're amazing. And then there's me who draws the same 10 things over and over. And then every now and then I leave it so long without drawing one where it's like this happens. And I'm like, how the fuck am I doing this? So I can't get it, man. And then usually when you're in this situation, it's because you've got a bad foundation. Like, something here is not right. Whether it's the thumb needs to be more like that, might well be it. But, I don't know. Basically, yeah, there we go.
Mm. <laughs> okay, now. Good fight still. What sort of creature is Bog Swamp? Is he a certain species or is he a mythical creature? When I first started drawing these kind of monsters, I just wanted like a... Just an androgynous dude character that just falls out of my pen. So, I don't really know. Not really gave it much thought. The, I, the thing that I sent off to the Rocket guys was that he lives in a sewer in Leicester. And then two friends found him and gave him a nice bath. And now he's got the confidence to not knock about in the city or whatever. And it was based on me and my ex bird. We used to call each other Bog Swamp if we were like sat around in our pants, not showered. It's like, you boggo, you Bog Swamp. And that's where it came from. So, now you know. Oh, big up Jack. Love Jack Pender. Top bloke. Make a gun finger with your own hand and compare it, you scrub. You fucking dick. Like, I don't do that shit. When I'm on live, I'm dropping photos into the composition and tracing over them. But now I'm on live, it's like, yeah, I can't do that. It has to be just me drawing. Plus, like, come on, man. Where's the fingernails? Kane's got all the ideas. I'll do for now. Maybe pop a little cigarette in there or something. This is it, though, because it's going to go off there, isn't it? Is that all right? You've got to be careful, ain't you? Kids about. That's the annoying thing with these monsters. Can't draw any weird dark shit now, because it's like, yeah, all oh, the kids love you drawing. I want to draw, like, a heroin needle. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God, it's done. Yeah, all these lot who wrestle bears as kids, it's long low. It just let them have their own MMA division and then we go back to how it was five years ago because they're the hardest men in the world. And anyone who thinks that Khabib ain't the top boy is an idiot. Who would you rather get outed as a bad man? The fellow who does definitely uh, Jake Humphreys. Diary of a CEO fellow. I think he's actually all right. I don't think he's terrible. I ain't one of those people who shag his podcast, but I think he's pretty normal. The most annoying thing is, what's that weird intro he does? He like he says something that grammatically doesn't quite make sense at the start of the podcast and that's irritating but I think he knows his place he's a bit of a cool dude whereas Jake Humphries is some fucking jumped up ITV twat ain't he he's just a melt this is so off brand by the way because the lads are in here and we're just having a chat I'm thinking like I wonder if there's any like Sam Grubart people who were locked in who were like oh my lord what a potty mouth maybe maybe they'll watch back oh god I didn't think of that did I here we are. Yeah, big up Volk, man, taking the fight. Boom. Now you got kicked in your head. Fucking hell. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Bastard. The ground and pound is just nuts as well. It's so... I feel like all these lads are so direct with their striking. Then there's no emotion in it. Oh my lord, we've covered the lot here, haven't we? We've done a big 50 cent loving, a little bit of MMA chat, bang on the palms. Uh, talking about gun fingers and how to draw. Big old chat. Tattoo stuff, Corinne in early with the, uh, what's it called, with the Procreate shouts. Alex has been doing a little bit of bog swamp chat. I'm having a great time, I can't wait to uh, jump back on tomorrow. Bro, this is sick. Which tablet and program are you using? Programs Procreate. Been shouting it out throughout, so it's a really nice. I recommend anyone who's got an iPad just download it. It's twelve quid, but you gotta get yourself a pen as well. But if you've got one, then happy days. And it's like, oh, it's such a beautiful, intuitive tool. It's so easy to use. It does what you think it should do. The a the uh, UI design is just beautiful. And which tablet? It's the bought it two years ago, and it was the big boy one. How do you find out? Uh, this iPad. Wait, no. Yeah, is that going to bring it up? Yeah, model. iPad Pro. Yeah, it's a, what, 2021 iPad Pro. It's got, a, I think, an M1 chip. Um, 
fast as fuck. I try not to use it for anything other than just art stuff. Um, so it's still in really good nick after a couple of years and I blast it to be fair. Art stuff and then just like watching YouTube when I'm cooking. <clears throat> them fighters from them sides was brought up differently. Punching trees before they can walk. Trust me, it's, it's not fun, man. I loved Connor and I loved when Connor came in the sport and I loved the Aldo moment because I really loved Aldo and respected Aldo. That's my era of MMA. I'm not a Connor fanboy. I was here before that. So I'm talking about you flipping Anderson Silvers, BJ Penns, seeing Aldo do the lot. And then Connor come in, smack talked him into a stupid advance, bombed him out in like five seconds flat. And it's like, wow, what an incredible entrance into the world of sport. And then when it comes to him fighting... Uh, What's his name? Nagamedov. It's like, I don't know how the Connor fanboys thought that he was going to come out on top. When he said to him, I'm going to change your face forever. And then he punched him in his face until Connor McGregor looks how he does now. That's like so incredibly humbling. It's like brand Connor McGregor is on its arse. Then I read the other day he sold his whiskey brand for like 600 million. So what do I know? Here's me living check to check. Big up Connor McGregor. Thoughts on Fury and Garno? I hate Fury. Well, I don't hate Fury. I hate boxing. I think there's no sport that has more potential and gives a worse output than boxing. All this celebrity boxing shit needs to go in the bin as well. And I'm good to date in Garno Jones. Never happened. I wish, as much as Dana White is like the sports Hitler, I wish he just still had a stronghold on all these fighters. I saw like Pettis the other day on a Bellator card. I was like, fuck yeah, Anthony Pettis. And like all these guys like Yol Romero who just dribble out the back door. It's like, man... It's a shame, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know who's going to win. I don't know enough about boxing. I don't watch enough boxing these days to know. Obviously, Fury's a mad guy with a crazy frame, but I'm an MMA fan, and I think the mobility of MMA fighters and the pockets they're moving in and out of is maybe just a little bit more technical than where you get to as a heavyweight boxer. But then Fury could... Fury's Fury, and he's insane. His body's nuts. He's got such a big reach. Alex saying, do you live in Leicestershire? I know that it must be somewhere in the areas you are fairly well known. Yeah, so I'm from Leicester. Grew up like Braunston, Narborough Roadside my whole life. But right now I'm living in Marrakesh. I'm travelling, so I'm away for a bit. Hence why there's been no pop-ups or no stuff on the ground and the web shop's closed and stuff like that. But we'll be probably be back one day. I don't know. We'll see. Cormier, bang on it. Never a great Cormier. Only ever reached true greatness when John Jones weren't about. And anyone who is all this Hall of Fame shit that they throw at him, it's just to boost his prestige as a company man. He was never, ever, ever the guy. Not for a day in his life. And he's a right tubby bastard as well. When he was like, I think it might have been when he was facing Jones. You know that Megan Trainer song, all about the all about the bass. He did some promo like all about the cake, and he's there just like stuffing cake down and stuff. And then he's gone and got bombed in his face in a world title fight, laid flat out. It's like, well, what we're we doing in? If if Wild Art dropping Fury, then surely surely Ngarno gets a clean connection. Yeah, hundred percent. If Ngarno punches any man on earth, he's dropping him. I think. And Wilder is just just a boxer, isn't he? He's not even a top boy. So, I don't know. Big up Range eighty two just joined. People who don't know Range shot the photos for the last calendar that I did. That was like the Leicester sketches. So, um, big up Range. You is a big help. It was a nice piece of work to do. Do you, have you got any future plans when it comes to Bogs, the Bog Swamp character? I don't know. You're screaming TV shows. So maybe that's the shout. Try and get it commissioned. No ideas. Don't know. What What could I do? What do you want to see? What's a fun thing that I could do with it that you would make you uh, put your hand in your pocket? One thing I thought to do is like, you know, like a pairs game for kids. Make up some cards with like different monster faces on. Obviously, like a purple one, a green one, whatever. I thought it would be relatively cheap to produce and like parents who would like to buy it might be a fun thing. Like a little pairs game. You know, where you could play Snap or whatever. Or a deck of cards and do like the kings and queens. You know, in the traditional like head to tail was kind of mirrored style but then with like a monster head or whatever do him in like a king's robe and shit might have been cool that octopus is nice big him up 
I used to draw him with septopus, and I've still got it. Seven legs. I did that without even concentrating. This is septopus, not octopus. And he was a character I used to draw back in the day. I have to bring him back. He was meant to be massive. I used to do these drawings of like a cityscape like when I was at college, I guess. And then I'd do him like Godzilla kind of vibe, like massive above the buildings, just wreaking absolute havoc. What you reckon to the Shara bullet fighter? He looks promising. Who's this? I genuinely don't know. I have to admit, like with MMA, my fanship waned. When, when they went through that period where every single main event was just getting cancelled due to injury or like whatever i kind of lost interest a little bit and then now they started doing like title fights on fight nights and just it's hard to keep up with our tune in and then the belts changed hands and i've not even heard about it now i've never really followed any mma media online because i usually watch the next day and i want to avoid the spoilers so i'm like out the loop with like who the new guys are and whatever are there any other characters in the Bog Swamp story that will be included if it was made into a whole movie or television show? Fucking all of them. Get the old gang in. I want everyone to get their bread. I wouldn't want to just... Imagine Bog Swamp going back to the monster universe and he's caked up and all the rest ain't got two, two quid to rub together. It's a bad look. I think Bog Swamp looks like a man of the people. I reckon he's bringing his friends along. What's Kane saying? Bog Swamp, guess who in it? Yeah, literally, like something like that. It'd be perfect. I think I should do that, you know, a little card game, make a little box up, make a little net, get them printed. I'm also potentially thinking the box one could potentially get a comic series like the Beano comic books. Yeah, a lot of work. Need an art team, need a whole team to do the drawing because that is fucking long. I can't be arsed with it. It's not really the company message, is it? You're meant to pretend like, yeah, art's my passion. I love my life. I just want to draw all the time. All I want to do is just watch football and eat chicken burgers. The, that new ginger, Magomedov, he got one eye. Ah, oh, I've seen this guy, yeah. Russian guys had a fight the other night. Yeah, I've seen him. I've not watched him fight, but... Uh, yeah, I know the dude you're on about. Is he meant to be a bit of a prospect then? Mickey saying, what goes into Room 101? Restaurants that describes themselves as Instagrammable or Dubai. Instagrammable restaurants, for me, literally just comes back to the hustle. I think if these people have fucking pea brains and you can spin them and take the money, then I think, yeah, do it. Like, I remember one time I was talking to his t-shirt printer and he was talking about the monsters and he was like, yeah, he's like, you know what we need to do is like, we need to make baby grows with the monsters on. And he's like, well, just donate like 10% to some fucking kids charity or something. And I was like, wow, what a simple way to look at it. You know, just like ultimately he's still donating money to charity. So I don't think it's disingenuous, but you know, just like, yeah, whatever, just do whatever, make it so people buy it. And I think Instagrammable restaurants and whatever are kind of the same thing. Like I had a mate who opened one up naming no names very much pointed at that kind of target audience and they all flocked and he creamed money off them and he took money off them every day and i think yeah if they're going to be going and getting their little prosecco somewhere it might as well be your gaff um but yeah what's dubai is like fucking christ man what a shit old i can't i i cannot genuinely understand why people want to go there and i love asking people why they want to go there and like people don't really have an answer you talk to them and it's like they get a little bit it's like people who shag michael jackson you know when you, re you remind them that he's a pedo how like upset they get and personal they take it i think it's the same with these dubai peeps because you're like what's good about it like there's a mall and a fat i think is it just for people who want to pretend to be rich and like wear some clothes or some shit like because it's it's impossible to bed in with the locals this is what i always say like there's no culture it's a 20 year old country 30 year old country and you can't bed in with the locals. You can't go and eat with Dubai people if you want to. Whereas, like, I've been to Lebanon and the, the locals accept you straight away. Like, you're banging it. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's a relatively similar country in a relatively similar part of the world. And so I'm like, why? I just don't know why you'd want to go to Dubai. When I went there, I was really lucky because, like, my ex-girl used to live out there. And bless her, she paid to fly me out or whatever because she's earning peas, living and working in Dubai. And I went and, like, if it wasn't for that, like, a freebie, obviously, I'm staying with her, I'm in the club for free because she's working there, and blah, 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 blah. I'm looking at punters, like, pretending to be footballers with bottles on their table and the little desperate judges that are knocking around and sort of girls, like, worldy 10 out of 10 girls that are looking at me just because I've got a booth and a bottle. And I'm like, never in a million years would you look at me, but you're here on Instagram, you think you're sick, whereas you're here now just begging free drinks. It's like, fucking Christ, man, what a shithole. 
I need to flatten it, make it a test guy. I'm playing the new Spider-Man game. So, so, so sick. Saw mixed reviews today. Don't Not really much of a game about it. I saw people saying, like, yeah, it blags it. It's like some big open world thing. But then the clip I saw, the dude's trying to go in a subway and just can't enter the subway. It just kept, like, respawning him outside it. And then I saw another thing where it's saying, like, you're playing as Miles Morales and all of a sudden you're some girl doing some spray painting thing where you're literally just moving the left analog stick left to right. But if it's working for you, it's working for you. I hope you've got red zone on the other screen. This is wicked. feel like I've had a bit of a chat with all my mates. Alex saying, I see where you're coming from. As most books have illustrators that do the drawing means that you could potentially be the author instead. Yeah, potentially. I can imagine that people want to go to Dubai in the UAE. It's certainly a record-breaking city when it comes to tall architecture and deep pools. What a shit reason to fly all that way. If that's the best thing it's got to offer, you've just made my point for me. So, fucking flatten it, man. But go see the Burj Khalifa. It's like, wow, another big building. You can just go to London if you want. There's loads of them. Yeah, maybe. Fucking Dubai, man. And it's like, all the food is just bastardised American shit. It's just burgers and fries everywhere you go. There's no, like... It's just impossible to bed in with the locals. How long are we on now? I wonder how long we've been online. That's the fight's done. They're just doing the post-fight chit-chat. I'm getting somewhere now. Big up all the early lockers, all the people locked in right now. I feel like I might get into doing some lives again, so maybe there'll be more to come. Try some more snacks, see what's happening. That's the drop he has. Look at that lava. Lava for them. I'm spilling crumbs on the iPad. A big bolo. Any type bolo. No bigger L than a city surrounded by desert importing sand for their beach. Anyway, had as well Dubai. It's, it got built so quick, they've got no sewer system. So every night there's this convoy of trucks that each transport 200 tonnes of human shit out to the desert and burn it. Um, so think about that if ever you go to Dubai and you're on the pot. Think about the journey. Alex saying, exactly right, in London they've got tall Ferris wheels, yeah, and tall buildings, but not as tall as the ones in Dubai, but at least they've got a good history behind it. Yeah, facts. Plus, like, come on, if you're looking up at a tall building, what is an extra 4%? It's either big or it's not, in it. Big up Brad. Brad's been on some travels. Brad was slewing uh, Dubai. So you've tuned in at the right time because I know it's an appealing you sh uh, a feeling you share with me. Getting too into this Dubai chat. I'm barely drawing now. I need to add some more detail. What can I add this small? I might do, like, a funny, weird car. Never been able to draw cars. You know, when, when I was a kid, you know, like, cars is a thing that... So I was always that kid, like, whenever people got the new planners in school, people want, oh, Sam, can you draw Kane and Triple H on the front of my planner? So, like, day one of a new year was long for me because I'm drawing on everyone's planners and whatever. I draw, like, the Hardy Boys or whatever. And then some people would be like, yeah, they want you to draw a car. But, like, I can't, in my mind's eye, I can't picture a car. Like, I find it really hard to, like, think what to do, you know. But I kind of like it because at least if it's, like, wonky and consistent, then it looks kind of like... I've done it on purpose, you know. Like, bonnet, maybe. <laughs> you see what I mean? 